The adverse health effects of tobacco use on the human body have been the subject of scientific study for hundreds of years. Today it is known that cigarette smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the world. Five million people die every year from tobacco use. Yet despite this shocking statistic, cigarette consumption is actually increasing, mostly in low and middle income countries that can least afford the consequences. China is the world's most populous country, home to nearly one-third of the world's smokers. Professor Yang is head of the Chinese Center of Disease Control and Prevention Office of Tobacco Control. Part of her mission is to educate the masses about the dangers of tobacco, an immense task given the sheer numbers of smokers in her country. Among the top eight causes of death in China, except for traffic accidents, all are related to smoking. The total number of deaths that can be attributed to smoking has increased to over one million per year. Tobacco control is a very crucial component for chronic disease control in China. Professor Hu Daiyi, president of the Chinese Cardiology Society, works in China where nearly 30% of all male cardiologists smoke. Even among light smokers who may smoke one to five cigarettes, their risk of heart attack doubles. The harmful effect of tobacco smoke is clear and severe especially to patients who have cardiovascular disease or had it before, men and women alike. Nevertheless, the public, patients, and many of our cardiologists haven't taken this seriously enough. There are many things to be done to resolve this urgent issue. To a patient with a heart attack or at high risk, the doctor may prescribe him drugs like aspirin or beta blockers. But the same doctor may not realize that persuading the patient to quit smoking is also part of his responsibility and is required for the clinical practice. Even when they understand the health risks of smoking, many patients do not identify with them or take them seriously, an unfortunate consequence that's often not realized until something happens. In the past, I did not consider smoking to be harmful since there were many smokers around who still lived up to 70 or 80 years. That was what most people thought. About 9 a.m., suddenly I felt discomfort in my stomach, felt like to vomit. One of my colleagues noticed my being pale and sweating over. I felt myself that sweat was drifting along the hair. The doctors in the ER said I was having a heart attack when they first saw me and had to have an operation. When I was discharged from the hospital, my doctor stressed to me that I must quit smoking. The consequence could be very severe. But it's not just smokers who are at risk. Secondhand smoke is a major source of indoor air pollution. We now know that it increases the risk of heart disease, respiratory illness, and even cancer in non-smokers. Over one-third of the world's population is regularly exposed to secondhand smoke. A recent report found that about half of all children in Shanghai are exposed to secondhand smoke. The smoke from burning tobacco, like air pollution from autos and industrial sources, adversely affect the heart and lungs. When a breath is taken in, smoke is drawn in through the trachea, then the bronchi, into the lungs, and then the arteries. 
Here a coronary artery shows platelets, red blood cells, and white blood cells moving through it. Platelets begin changing shape, developing very rough edges in response to the smoke entering the bloodstream, sticking to each other, and the walls of the artery. A lesion representing plaque on the inside of the coronary wall ruptures, and the roughened platelets stick to it. A clot of platelets and red blood cells form at the site of the rupture. As a result, the heart downstream darkens from the lack of blood flow. The rhythm becomes irregular, and finally, the heart stops beating. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here in the room uh, for the release of a new report from the Institute of Medicine, which is called Secondhand Smoke Exposure and Cardiovascular Effects. Making sense. The report that was prepared, um, I think, is the most comprehensive report to look at the biological plausibility issues here. The importance of the study for cardiologists is that we now have good evidence that exposure to secondhand smoke in a smoky room for a short period of time can cause a heart attack. So from the point of view of policy, I think cardiologists should be in the forefront of saying secondhand smoke is an immediate threat to cardiovascular health. It can cause a heart attack within hours of exposure. This is the state of the science on the relationship between secondhand smoke exposure and acute coronary events or... The bottom line is that we were able to find that there's a causal association generally between secondhand smoke exposure and um, cardiovascular disease and that we could be confident that smoking bans do actually lead to a reduction in heart attacks among non-smokers. The World Health Organization predicts that India will experience a massive increase in tobacco-caused deaths over the next two decades. Most people in India today smoke BDs, a locally produced product that's very cheap and very toxic. However, regular commercial cigarettes are on the rise as international tobacco companies try to hook new customers. Both BDs and cigarettes expose non-smokers to secondhand smoke. A million people die each year from tobacco-related diseases in India. Many of them die very young. I have seen people in their 30s and 40s die of a massive heart attack or suffer severe disability even if we manage to save them. So as a cardiologist, I've become only too conscious of some of the severe health effects of tobacco in this country. Dr. Reddy, director of the Public Health Foundation of India and World Heart Federation board member, represented India in negotiations of the first global health treaty to address the epidemic of tobacco use. This World Health Organization sponsored treaty requires ratifying nations to adopt and enforce smoke-free policies, obliging them to take steps to reduce the harms of tobacco in all indoor public places where people might be exposed, including hospitals, clinics, schools, transportation centers, workplaces, and restaurants. So far, more than 40 countries have adopted 100% smoke-free policies, yet much of the world's population remains unprotected. Uruguay was the first Latin American country to implement a 100% smoke-free policy in March of 2006. Dr. Eduardo Bianco, a medical doctor and cardiologist, was at the forefront to make Uruguay smoke-free. Bueno, eso ya está absolutamente confirmado. La evidencia científica. Well, that is absolutely confirmed. The scientific evidence is irrefutable, and there is no doubt that someone who lives works or studies with a smoker indoors can develop the same type of diseases as those develop among smokers. And the only way to avoid the harmful effects is not ventilation or separation of smoking and non-smoking areas, but the prohibition of smoking in all enclosed areas.
the tobacco industry has tried to thwart smoke-free laws. However, in July 2009, Colombia enacted a comprehensive tobacco control law, which included a nationwide 100% smoke-free policy. Carlos Ignacio Cuervo, new Vice Minister of Social Protection, led the effort to declare a sweeping smoke-free decree. Smoking is prohibited in public places such as bars, clubs, restaurants, and other establishments. In areas cerradas or in interiores, no se puede fumar. Without a doubt, if the Vice Minister of Health is aware of a socially acceptable bad habit that is an avoidable risk factor, and people start smoking at a young age and will likely be smokers for the rest of their lives, well, one could not be okay with this. In addition, the permanent lobby of the tobacco companies continuously blocked this effort, which should have happened years ago in Colombia. This anti-tobacco law is going to have an immense impact on the health indicators, not just on cancer, but also on coronary heart disease. One of the challenges, as many know, was that the general population was not aware of the consequences of tobacco use and exposure. People thought it was about fashion or a lifestyle choice, not understanding it as death and addiction. It's estimated by the year 2020, tobacco will kill over 10 million people a year. These are 10 million deaths that can be prevented. All countries of the world can do what Uruguay, Colombia, and 40 other countries have done, adopt strong, smoke-free policies. We as a society need to decrease our dependence on tobacco. It's not only with patients and families, it's with the people who economically depend upon growing it. First and foremost, physicians should not smoke. Secondhand smoke has to be a major priority in terms of our preventive efforts for heart disease and stroke. Cardiologists can become truly major leaders in the tobacco control movement if they apply themselves. After all, the single foremost cause of death by tobacco anywhere in the world is cardiovascular disease.